A model steam engine test plant, this is part 5. Fitting the mounting onto the baseboard. The boiler is held in place by two brass bands. This part of the job proved difficult owing to the design and I am using steel bolts for the job instead of brass ones. As shown previously I drilled the holes in the boiler mounting and in the baseboard very accurately and here I am just fitting the mounting onto the bolts sticking out of the baseboard. I am using four 2BA brass bolts for this job. I am fitting brass washers and brass nuts which will avoid any problems with rust. This is a very simple job and doesn't even require narration. I just spun all the nuts onto the bolts and tightened them up underneath using a screwdriver. The nuts were held in place at the other side with one of my Barco spanners. When using brass fittings that mark easily, particularly dome headed brass bolts, it's a good idea to select the correct screwdriver for the job. In no time at all, the base is fastened to the baseboard. And in this clip, I'm sitting the boiler on the mounting base to see which way round it goes. And I wasn't myself yesterday, I was feeling a bit ill. And what I did was, I put the boiler on the wrong way round. And at this stage I hadn't noticed that, it even looked like the boiler bands were in the right place. I want to use 5BA bolts for this job, and I thought that's what it originally used, but no, they were metric and smaller than 5BA. Trying to enlarge the holes with a grinder just made the part very hot. Instead, I used a 1 8 twist drill. Here was the original plan, 5 BA bolts through holes in the brass bands. The fittings are different at each side, don't ask me why I didn't make it. In my opinion, it would have been a far better idea to just use four brackets, all of an identical size. The nuts and bolts did not fit as planned. This was a much easier method, I turned the bolt upside down and screwed a brass nut on the top of it. And thinking about it, it will make adjustment much easier. Here I'm tightening the nut onto the bolt. And to stop the brass band from twisting, I'm holding that with my Barco spanner. These two mounting bands are not very well made, I may remove them once I've finished the job, just to round the edges and make them look better. There has been some attempt to round the brass banding at this side but at the other side they're perfectly square and quite sharp. I don't suppose it matters because this is the back of the boiler, but that is not the point. I like parts to be correctly made and fitted, and it's not OCD, it's just down to my personal standards. That's one side fitted, now for a more difficult part. I really do not understand why the brackets at this side of the mounting have been made like this. Either way, the holes in them are not the right size, and I'm having to thread them using a tap to 5BA. As I screw in the first of the bolts, I can't help but thinking that this isn't a very strong method, because the bolts won't go all the way down in the bracket. At both sides of the boiler, these bolts are used as tensioners for the bands, to put pressure on the boiler to hold it in place on the mounting. And in this clip, I'm undoing the nuts at the other side, because they were holding the bands far too close to the bracket. I'm not taking them off, I'm just loosening them to give me a bit more clearance. It's a bit of a strange concept really, but it works. I've temporarily put the tanks in position just to get an idea of how it's all going to work, but unfortunately the tanks are in the wrong place. The special double tank needs to go at the burner end, so the boiler is the wrong way round. But this is an easy job, I simply remove it and refit it, and that's where the trouble started. This is the large collector tank for the overflow from the injector, and this part is a larger diameter than the tank that sits above it and the condenser at the other end. It should make more sense to you at the end of the video when I show the proposed layout. For all intents and purposes, the angle you're looking at at the moment is the front of the boiler, so when I'm operating it, this is what I'll see. I'm also going to rotate the pressure gauge so it will be easier to read. The whole point of this plant with its large water tube boiler and gas firing system is that I won't ever have to give it much attention when it's running. The injector will keep it topped up with water and I'll only have to turn a couple of taps to do that. This is where I had a problem. Brass bolts are no good for this application and look what happened. One of them sheared off with very little provocation. 
So before I sheared off the other one, I undid it and put it back in the box. Here, using a 3 seconds of an inch diameter twist drill, I'm drilling out the broken bolt. Marking it out was difficult. I did it with the drill and my calibrated eye, and I got it exactly in the centre. Here's an interesting clip from a video I made a while back. This is how I removed a broken tap from a hole in a piece of brass. It's not witchcraft, it's just chemistry. I bought this small gas appliance via eBay a while back, and why did I buy it? Because I thought it would be useful for steaming vertical boilers. But so far I haven't used it for that. So what am I doing at the moment? I'm putting a pan of water on top of the gas burner. It's a really good gas burner, it boiled the water in no time. And now I'm adding the alum powder. This stuff is called Fatakdi powder. I've put the spelling on the screen and it's also known as alum powder. I'd never heard of this before. John at the steam workshop told me about it and said that it was very good at removing steel parts from non-ferrous metals. So I'm really hoping that it's going to remove this small piece of broken tap from one of the holes in the chimney mounting. I read the directions on the packet and it contains all sorts of things. It may contain nuts and other things like that. And I went on to read its application. It's for keeping vegetables crisp. It's some sort of a pickling compound. So I assume that it's non-poisonous. What the plan is, is to boil it up like this and then leave it overnight or maybe for a couple of days or maybe a week until it dissolves the tap. Unfortunately though, this is a broken brass bolt and so alum would not remove it. I finished the drilling out operation without event and went all the way through. Here I'm threading the hole and this time I'm threading it right to the bottom because before I couldn't get all the way to the bottom. The next part of this job is to secure the boiler bands to these brackets using steel bolts. And now without further ado it's top tip time. This is how I secured the bolts in position. It's much quicker than using a spanner. I used a nut spinner with a slot cut in the end, which I did on the bandsaw, and now I can use a screwdriver, which makes fiddly jobs like this much easier. With the boiler now the right way round and secured to the base, I can show the planned layout in detail. The hand pump needs to be here, because the top of the hand pump, the outlet, is close to the fitting on the boiler for the check valve. Also the live steam injector is going to fit here and the injector's water outlet will go to a check valve in the place previously shown. And the steam valve for the injector is on the top of the boiler so I'll need to run a pipe from here to the injector's steam inlet. The arrangement is quite logical if you think about it. The tall tank at the other end is the condenser and this is near to the chimney, which is ideal. Here you can see the proposed layout. From left to right, condenser, boiler, water tank sat on top of a reservoir tank. The water in this lower tank should in theory be quite hot, as it gets its water via the injector's overflow. The inlet to the hand pump will take its water from the bottom part of this lower tank. And that's it. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.